With a rapid rise in rates, savers are finally being rewarded with decent interest rates. The question is, where is the best place to save your money? Well, that's what we're getting into today. Hi, and welcome back to Stop Being Sold. My name is Michelle, and I'm here with Brian. And in today's video, we're going through the difference between the MIGA and the high yield savings account. And if you stay until the very end, you will see the key differences that will help you make the most informed decision on where to stash your cash. You know, Michelle, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates seven times in 2022 alone to fight the record levels of inflation. And with this rise in rates, we're seeing rates on savings vehicles rise. Finally, Finally but right. not with all types of accounts. And that's what you got to watch for. You know, the national average annual APY, annual per, uh, percentage yield on savings account is still just 0.24% according to the FDIC today. High yield savings accounts are paying anywhere from four to 6% uh, percent right now, depending on the bank and the amount deposited. Right. And MIGAs are paying about the same between four and 6% right now, depending on the number of years you want guaranteed. The longer the term, the higher the rates. All right, well, before we get into it, I want to just offer a quick disclaimer. Stopping sold is not a bank and we do not sell annuities here. Our goal is to give you the facts so that you can determine which product may best suit you. We see bank websites touting all the negatives of annuities. And while the annuity, and then on the flip side, the annuity websites are highlighting all the negatives of high <laughs> yield savings accounts. Right. So we, there are great benefits to both products and it really just depends on your financial goals and your needs. So our goal here today is not to push a financial product Product, but to educate you so you can make the best decision possible. All right. Well, with all that out of the way, let's start with MIGAs. You know, that kind of sounds like that, uh, the new drug commercial. Right. Yeah. Okay. Except for what we're telling you today won't give you a kidney failure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, and we didn't rush right through it to where you didn't understand it. So right. anyways, let's start with MIGAs. You know, MIGAs stands for multi-year guaranteed annuities. And MIGAs are a contract between you and an insurance company and are a type of a fixed annuity that focuses on accumulation of your savings versus creating an income stream. And here's how they work. You usually pay a lump sum of money to an insurance company and they give you a specified amount of interest for a certain number of years. Okay. So MIGAs are used for accumulating, more for accumulating assets than creating income streams for life. And right, right now you said, depending on the the years guaranteed in the contract that migrants are paying between four and 6%. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and the longer the term, the higher the rates. So, all right, well, this is a great segue, I think into liquidity, which is super important to keep in mind when deciding where you want to put your money, because should something arise emergency, you never know. Right. And right. your money is locked up like it is with a MIGA, you may end up losing money to fees for breaking the contract. And that's something to really keep in mind. Yeah, that's right, Michelle. MIGAs are usually illiquid for the term of the contract, mm -hmm. which range anywhere from like two to 10 years. So have provisions where you can remove just the interest rate each year, and maybe some of them give you a partial free withdrawal. Okay. okay. So most, most annuities have high surrender charges. In the in case of MIGAs, you may end up paying more in fees than the interest you would have earned. Make sure you have another account that you can use in case of an emergency. And don't forget to check the contract terms. Read the fine print before you sign anything as each contract is different. Absolutely. Yeah. And another thing to point out is um, unlike high yield savings accounts, Michelle, MIGAs aren't FDIC insured. So that may be another variable for you to think about in this situation. Annuities are instead backed by the claims paying ability of the insurance company offering the MIGA. Okay. All right. Good to know. So let's discuss one of my favorite topics, a taxation. Another key thing to consider when deciding where to save your money is, is taxation. So let's talk a little bit about how MIGAs are taxed. Yeah. MIGAs, I like the taxation of MIGAs because they're tax deferred until you withdraw from them. Okay. You pay normal income on the interest earned, but not until you withdraw the funds. Okay. All right. So let's move on to high yield savings accounts. So most of us know these are similar to regular savings accounts. You can make deposits, transfers, withdrawals, you know, and there are limits uh, on withdrawal limits on some of them, uh, but there is that liquidity there. So should you need cash for an emergency, whether it be to take your 
your beloved pet to the vet or you need a new right. roof, you can access it quickly and transfer your money into your checking account. Okay. So other than that, the biggest difference is that high yield accounts earned, earn a much higher rate of interest. Yeah, Michelle, sometimes as much as 20 to 25 times higher. Now, not uh, before, but now. Yeah, right? now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Six months ago? No. no. <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, though, high yield savings accounts are paying between 4 and 6% right now, depending on the bank and the amount deposited. Okay. And the rate you earn is measured in APY, which is annual percentage yield. Unlike annuities, they are in FDIC insured up to currently uh, $250,000 per account. Okay, so how are high yield savings accounts taxed? Okay, they are different than my guess. Okay, high yield savings accounts are taxed as normal income in the year you earn the interest, even if the money is not withdrawn. That's the difference between that and the MIGA. You'll get a 1099 each year showing the interest earned, and you'll pay taxes on that amount. Okay, so here's the million dollar question when wondering where you should stash your cash. The MIGA or the high yield savings account? You choose the one that meets your goals personally. And here's what I mean. Let's talk about rates and taxes. First, okay. you need to compare the rates between the products. Let's say you have $10,000 to save and both are paying 4.5% per year. Okay. You'll yield $450, $450 in interest for the year. This is taxes normal income for both. If you don't remove the interest, only the high yield savings account will send you a 1099 for the year. Okay. That's one difference. Liquidity. This is the second big difference. If you have an emergency and need access to all your funds in the short term, the high yield savings account is going to be your better option. MIGAS will have surrender charges for early withdrawals before the end of the term. Got it. Okay. So question is, why not choose both? You totally can. If you find a MIGA paying the highest rates over your high yield, high yield savings accounts, put enough into a high yield savings account to where you feel comfortable if an emergency arises and put the remaining funds in a MIGA where it's paying the higher interest rate. Got it. You know, one thing we did not talk about here, and I just want to add, when you're looking at both, I like this idea of putting, you know, cash in something that's liquid, but then locking right. up your money in a MIGA. It's always nice because it does sit there and it does grow. And if you have the discipline, <laughs> I mean, it's it's easy to just let it sit there and grow for you and you're less likely to tap into it because of those right. fees, right? Most people don't, Michelle. Most people won't tap into it because of the early withdrawal penalty. Right. And they know that it's, they're getting a guaranteed rate of return. So. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for us. Listen, we are going to put a video below in the uh, description and in the pinned comment. And it's a deep dive we did on MIGA buyer beware. Make sure to check that out. If you're interested in MIGAs, you need to understand what they are and everything about them. And also, yeah. if you like the content of this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, leave us a comment below and share this with someone you love. All right. Well, thank you, Brian, so much for this. And thanks to everyone who watched. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.